Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy, and I have a question for you. And that question is, hey, do you want to pass college algebra? And I know that's a silly question because if you're taking college algebra, your answer is going to be, well, obviously, Mr. YouTube Math Man, teach me something that I don't know so I can pass college algebra. Well, that's the whole point of this video. And by the way, I could easily uh, remove college algebra and put in courses like, hey, do you want to pass algebra 2, pre-calculus, college math, things along those uh, mathematics at that level, okay? A little bit before calculus, but at like the college 2. And by the way, if you uh, remember taking um, Algebra 2 in high school, and that's a pretty typical course, that's effectively the same thing as college algebra. So we're talking about second year um, algebra courses and beyond. But uh, specifically, we're talking about solving an equation like this. So you absolutely need to be able to solve an equation like this to be successful at these um, levels, at this level of mathematics. So. If you could solve this equation, go ahead and put your uh, put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the complete answer in just one second. Then I'm going to walk you through uh, this uh, equation step by step. This is really, really important stuff. And I uh, kind of don't want to give you too many hints right now on what type of equation this is or even strategies because I want to give you a full opportunity to solve this thing all on your own. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so we have a to the fourth power minus 3a squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Obviously, we are looking to solve for a. And what is the solution? Well, let's go and take a look at it right now. A is equal to, we have four uh, roots or four solutions here. So A is equal to positive negative 2 and positive negative I. Okay, so hopefully you recognize this as a complex or imaginary number root. And positive negative 2 is obviously part of the real number system. So we got real uh, solutions and imaginary solutions or complex solutions. And if you are already lost, don't panic. What you want to do is, well, first of all, a few things here. If you're only at like the algebra one level, it's pretty, um, you know, probably um, the case that you have not yet studied this. So if you don't know what's going on, again, it's a good chance that you have not yet uh, gotten to this level in, you know, your studies. However, if you're at that algebra two, college algebra, certainly pre-calculus, courses like that, then you definitely um, um, you know study this, and what we're talking about here is polynomial equations. All right, advanced polynomial equations, fourth degree polynomial equations to be specific. But uh, if you got this right, that is super impressive. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can tell your friends and family that indeed you can handle a fourth degree polynomial equation. They'll be so, so impressed with that information. They'll be like, wow, you must be a math genius. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get into this problem. So, uh, you know, it's impossible for me in this uh, short video to teach you everything you need to know about uh, polynomial equations. This is a huge topic in algebra. Okay, and the first thing you need to know is um, when you look at an equation in mathematics, is you need to ask yourself, hey, what type of equation are you dealing with? Okay, there's all different types of equations in mathematics. There's linear equations, systems of equations, quadratic equations, polynomial equations, and of course, to be a little technical here, quadratic equations are uh, second degree polynomial equations, but there's logarithmic equations, exponential equations, rational equations, radical equations, on and on and on, right? So there's different types of equations, and lots of different types, and depending on what type of equation you have, that's going to, you know, uh, bring up a set of techniques and methods to solve that type of equation, all right? So you just don't solve equations in general in algebra. Like, oh, it's an equation, I need to do X, Y, Z. Well, it all depends on what type of equation. So you want to identify what type of equation you're dealing with. And uh, I don't want to spend too much time reviewing this, but hopefully you understand that this is a polynomial 
equation, okay? So we have some terms here, and the exponents are positive integers. So, you know, just a kind of a, a rough definition. You got positive integers um, as the exponents, and your variables uh, here, we got at, um, a, of course, is what we're trying to solve for, and the coefficients, there's actually one here, are real numbers. So loosely speaking, that's the, um, kind of the definition of a polynomial, okay? So we're trying to solve for a. So that's the first thing is, a, oh, okay, we're dealing with a polynomial equation. But what's the next thing that you want to be thinking about? Well, once you've identified what type of equation, you need to ask yourself, what are the uh, methods and techniques? What do you know about polynomial equations? Well, I'm going to um, state probably one of the most important things that you need to understand about polynomial equations. And that is the fundamental theorem of algebra. Now, I'm kind of paraphrasing here, uh, not being overly technical, but basically the fundamental theorem of algebra, that sounds so like impressive, right? Like, wow, that's this is like the secret to uh, mathematics, the secret to algebra, but it's a very powerful um, uh, uh, theorem, okay? And basically what it says is, if you have a polynomial equation like the one we have right here, you will have, uh, in terms of number of solutions, you're going to have um, exactly uh, the degree of that polynomial is how many answers, how many solutions you're going to have. Okay, so in this case, we have a fourth degree. Uh, degree is the highest power of that polynomial. So that means that this uh, polynomial will have four solutions. So the fundamental theorem of algebra tells us how many um, solutions we are going to have. Okay, so we must have. So not like, well, you know, you'll have, well, hopefully we'll find four. No, there's absolutely four solutions. Now, what type of solutions uh, will this polynomial have? Well, it all depends. You can have real number solutions. You can have complex number solutions. You can have a combination of both real and complex. So there's all different sorts of other theorems. Uh, like Descartes' rule of signs, uh, uh, synthetic division, uh, rational root theorem. These are all kind of related topics to polynomials and advanced polynomials that you need to know that are um, kind of a part of this conversation about solving advanced polynomial uh, equations. So uh, in order to solve an advanced polynomial equation, you need to know how to solve you know, other types of polynomial equations. So I'm going to suggest to you that you need to be really good at solving quadratic equations, right? These are second degree polynomial equations. And the discussion here is we're um, uh, solving a fourth degree polynomial equation, but basically anything beyond a quadratic equation, in other words, a third degree, this um, highest power was three, that's where you're gonna need to know these additional techniques and uh, theorems and whatnot. Very, very, very important. And, um, you know, all these topics to solve polynomial equations and polynomials in algebra, like algebra one, algebra two, college algebra, it's a huge chunk of the course, okay? So indeed, you need to know a lot about polynomials. Okay, so hopefully that kind of sets the stage here. And you want to be thinking about all the techniques to solve quadratic equations, things like factoring the quadratic formula. This comes into play even when you're solving uh, polynomial equations beyond a second degree. Again, there's other techniques that you need to know. But in this particular situation, we have a pretty cool way of solving this um, fourth degree polynomial equation. Again, we are looking for four solutions. Okay, there's four solutions because this is a fourth degree polynomial equation. And the fundamental theorem of algebra states that we need to find those four solutions. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so here, when you look at this uh, polynomial, you got a to the fourth minus 3a squared minus 4. Maybe some of you, and hopefully all of you, kind of are looking at this and go, you know what, this kind of reminds me of uh, this uh, polynomial, like a trinomial, right? You're like a to the fourth three, minus 3a squared. If this kind of follows this patterns. If this made you uh, kind of think of a, a second degree trinomial, like a quadratic trinomial stuff that you dealt with in algebra one, well, that is good thinking. Matter of fact, let's give you a nice little happy face for thinking in those terms. You want to be looking for patterns here. Okay. Now, why is that important? Because although this is the problem, if we kind of look at 
it follows the pattern, okay, of a squared minus 3a minus 4. Well, this is great because we can factor a squared minus 3a minus 4 into these two um, binomials, a minus 4 uh, times a plus 1. Now, if you don't know how to factor this to this, again, this is like algebra and uh, level stuff, then you should just kind of make note of this, and this the, kind of the rest of this problem might be a little bit uh, more advanced because you need to work on your factoring skills. So I'm going to... Um, uh, kind of direct you to my Algebra 2 course or College Algebra course. Um, I review factoring and all the stuff you'll kind of need to know for this. If you're at a higher level of mathematics like pre-calculus, you can go there and you'll get a lot of this stuff uh, in that course as well. Okay. All right. So again, we want to be kind of looking for uh, factoring patterns because factoring is an awesome way to solve polynomial equations if or other type of equations as well if you can't factor. So you might be saying to yourself, well, this looks like, boy, if this problem was this, then I could factor it into this. Well, we can actually uh, use a technique to factor this, thinking about it, uh, thinking of it as a, tri uh, tri a quadratic trinomial, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at how we could do that. All right, so here is the actual problem, but let's say we kind of rewrite this a bit uh, differently. So we have a to the fourth. Let's think of that as a squared squared, right? A squared squared is the same thing as a to the fourth. So this a squared here, all right, if we're kind of letting uh, this a squared squared, well, let's make this a squared uh, kind of put that in parentheses right here, all right? So that's just a squared to the first. So we're kind of getting back to the original here, right? And then we have minus four. So what I'm kind of um, showing you here is an example of, of um, uh, factoring by substitution. Okay, and this is a very, very important technique. So you're like, well, you know, we're kind of, you know, close to being able to kind of factor this, but here's the easiest way to approach this. So we're gonna go ahead and just substitute out this a squared. We're gonna call this another variable. So let's just let a variable like x, you can use another variable like u, it doesn't make a difference. Let's let x equal to a squared, okay? So what we're gonna do then is replace these a squares right here with x, okay? So instead of a squared, um, a squared to uh, squared, we're going to have x squared minus 3. Instead of this a squared, that's going to be x minus 4. Okay, So we're just going to substitute in another variable. And then, of course, we can factor x squared minus 3x minus 4. It factors into these two binomials, x minus 4 uh, times x plus 1. Now we're going to substitute back in for this x. Uh, because we let x equal to a squared, we're going to replace that x with a squared, okay? So now we have a squared minus 4 times a squared plus 1 equals 0. Okay, so this is how you would factor uh, something that seems to follow a uh, quadratic trinomial pattern just to use a substitution. Hopefully you've seen this technique uh, before, but again, you need to be super good at factoring in order to handle, you know, these uh, polynomial equations. Factoring is probably one of the most important uh, algebra skills you need to know. Okay, all right. So, so here's our um, our problem, our original problem. Now we were able to factor in uh, to this a squared minus four times a squared plus one. All right, just to review, but what we did, we took our original equation. And through substitution and factoring, we were able to factor this into these two binomials. Okay, so at this point, what we can do is because these two binomials, we have this thing being multiplied by this thing, it's equal to zero. Well, we can use the zero product property. Again, this is kind of um, techniques that you learn when you solve when you learn how to solve quadratic equations. So we're gonna set each of these binomials equal to zero. Now at this point, a squared minus four, you could continue to factor further into um, a plus two times a minus two. That's perfectly fine, but you don't need to, okay? You just set this factor equal to zero and set this factor equal to zero, a squared plus one is equal to zero, and then just solve for a. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this side here, this um, equation, a squared minus four. So I'm going to move the 4 to the other side. I got a squared is equal to 4. How do I solve for a? Easy. Just take the square root of both sides. So a will be equal to the square root of 4, which is, of course, positive and negative 2. So remember, when you're dealing with quadratic equations, you need to uh, take both the positive and negative 
uh, uh, roots when you're taking the square root of a positive real number, okay? Unlike just the principal square root, if I just asked you, hey, what's the square root of nine where there's no equations involved, the answer would be three. But if it's a squared is equal to nine, then the answer is both positive and negative three because we need both the positive and negative version, okay? So right now we have two unique answers. We have a is equal to two and negative two. And of course, we just write it as positive and negative two. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for a, in this equation, we have a squared plus one is equal to zero. So we're gonna move one over to the other side. So now you can see here, I'm gonna end up with imaginary solutions. You have a squared is equal to negative one. So to solve for a, I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. So a is gonna be equal to positive negative square root of negative one. And by definition, uh, I, okay, which is the imaginary part, complex number is equal to the square root of negative one. So A here is gonna be equal to positive and negative I. Okay, so let's go ahead and just make sure you understand we have four solutions here, which we were looking for. We have two, negative two, we have a positive I and a negative I. Four total solutions to this fourth degree polynomial equation. Okay, so in terms of level of difficulty, I would say this particular problem for this level of mathematics is maybe like a five out of a 10. So some of you might be saying, what are you talking about? This was so difficult. You might be like, you know, you're just making this stuff up. You know, uh, this is a difficult problem. Well, listen, it gets much more interesting, but nothing that you can't handle, okay? What you wanna do is build up your knowledge and build up your uh, skill set, and really have an attitude of you know not taking shortcuts and that's kind of the best way i can kind of say it if you want to rush through things like hey i just need to pass this course um that's kind of why i use the word pass because a lot of people just want to pass i just want to pass college algebra i don't really care about getting a great grade well you might want to just change your perspective be like instead of just wanting to pass Think in terms of how can I do great in this course because that's going to motivate you to learn everything you need to know. Because if you just want to pass, that kind of implies that, you know, oftentimes you just want to do the minimum you know, amount just to, you know, and when you're dealing with math at this level, you know, that's not going to serve you well. So if you need help with this stuff, check out my college algebra course or my algebra two course or pre-calculus course. Also, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out with all of this as well. But hopefully this little video helps you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.